Good evening, welcome to another episode of Man Cave Metal Mayhem. Uh, my name's Wayne, and if you're coming here for the first time, thank you for taking a look. If you're an existing viewer, thanks for coming back. Remember to uh, always hit that like and subscribe and all the other stuff. So, you might have noticed there wasn't a video last week. Or oh, you might not have done, depends on who I've got watching. Um, I had a very unproductive weekend last weekend, shall we say. Uh, what should have been a 10 minute job turned into a whole day job and essentially uh, I didn't record any of it because I was busy um, doing the job, I was swearing, uh, there was lots of F's and C's and all kinds of other things in it. Um, that's who I am, when I lose me rag, I lose me rag. And the poor old bandsaw that I was having a problem with got kicked up and down the shed a few times and... Um, if I'd have actually edited out all the violence and the swearing, there'd have probably been about three seconds of footage if I'd have filmed it, so didn't bother. But anyway, back this week. Um, done a few bits. Uh, Saturday, yeah, I'm filming this on Sunday. You might hear in the background some rattling and thumping around. That would be our mate Storm Kira that has basically been battering this shed all day today. Um, today's been garbage weather wise i've still got a lot done inside the shed but i've had to do a quick bit of emergency weatherproofing as well i didn't realize i had quite as many leaks as i did until uh storm Kira decided to rip away part of one of my roofing shed about to make a bit of a budge job got some stuff in order to fix that uh what i've done today is what i've done saturday the weather was gorgeous on saturday i was in here in a t-shirt it was it was gorgeous it was the sun was out sky was blue you know february in a t-shirt, you don't get much better than that. I'll take yourself, it's getting a bit warm in here again. Uh, what I did, I finished off a job for a friend of mine at work. Uh, basically, I had some stuff to chop up on the, the bandsaw just before Christmas. And because the bandsaw has been out of action for a little while, I have been doing it in other ways, using an angle grinder and stuff like that. And I've just been tidying the pieces up, making all the edges neat and tidy, uh, ready for him to come and pick up. That's now all done. So, Pat Hills, if you're watching, everything's done. All good. We're there, mate. Uh, a couple of bits I've been doing, I've been looking at getting ready to strip down the uh, box of the lathe by looking at you know options for getting the existing paint off of there. Chances are that paint is set 1970s when it was built and it's also it's going to be lead based. I've got no way of testing that, I'm not buying, I'm spending 40 quid on a lead paint testing kit. Um, you've seen them about, I don't know if anybody can suggest any cheaper way of checking for lead based paint, that would be great because uh, I don't got anything. What I'd also uh, like to put on here today is I've also bought a couple of bits from Warco to, for the Miller machine. Um, I don't normally do tool reviews. In fact, I don't even want to call this a tool review. It was actually pointing out something that came with this piece of kit, an otherwise very good piece of kit that basically took the shine off it just that tiny bit. Not overly much, you know, the, the kit is still very, very usable, it's still very good. It's just one thing that came with it, it was a little bit iffy. Yeah, that, that was a big rattle there. Um, what else have I been doing? I've just been tidying up essentially this weekend. I've managed to make some room for some other bits and pieces. Um, getting ready to make this bench, that's another thing. that I, see, I keep saying it's coming up. I've got to bite a bullet and get that done because until that's done, nothing else is going to move. Um, yeah, not a lot else going to happen there. Uh, so I've been testing out paint strippers. I've been looking at bits and pieces for the lay. One of the things I am also stripping down is the threading die indicator for my box of lay. I bought that um, off a guy on eBay who I'm also a member of his forum uh on facebook for box of lays and uh basically it needed good old clean which i haven't got around doing when i bought it so i've just done it this week it's also in a been covered in paint stripper as well because again that paint although it's a different color is still going to be old and it's still likely to be lead based so something for all of you out there if you're doing anything like this remember if it's old and it's painted there's a very good chance it's going to be lead based and you don't want the particles from that flying around the air Hence why I'm using a paint stripper and scraping it off so it doesn't fly down my lungs. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it today. Um, there's going to be a couple of bits put up. Uh, you're going to see a bit of me, uh, a little bit of uh, one of my milling machine setups. You're going to see uh, what I've been doing for said 
friend at work. There's a, just a little bit of that in there, just a tiny bit. There's the paint stripper stuff. Um, yeah, anyway, let's get on with the video. See you later. Okay, so what we're going to do tonight is one of, one of the things we're going to do tonight anyway is take a look at one of the purchases I recently made. As you can see on here, I have a random bunch of nuts, bolts, blocks, bits and pieces. This is the uh, small mill clamping set for a Walco WM14. That's the milling machine that I've got. Now, I don't normally do tool reviews. It's not my thing. All this fascination with unboxing stuff has never really been of much interest to me. However, this is quite interesting in, but not for the reasons you may think. So, to start off with, it's uh, 40 odd quid. I think it's 42 pounds from Walco. I'll put a link down the bottom there because, to put it quite bluntly, the stuff's good. The actual clamping and all that kind of thing, all the bits and bits, the blocks, the toe clamps, the rods spacers t nuts everything absolutely fine i've been there's a couple of bits missing out here that's actually in use on the mill at the moment so yeah I'm, this is pretty good i mean you've got four of each size spacer block you've got three sets of toe clamps three different sizes various nuts and bolts and spacers everything you're going to need for clamping down on your milling, milling table and so I've got a couple of bits in use at the moment. And they're doing a pretty good job. I'll show you a bit of that in a little while. It's a very basic setup for a bit of work I was doing. I'll show you the setup for that. Nothing, uh, <laughs> nothing over inventive. It's been done by a million people a million times. But uh, who knows? You might be interested. So the curious bit is, this is a well thought out pack. It's got plenty of different sizes of everything. Well made. In my opinion, they're very good quality, and to be quite frank, I would I'd buy them again. Um, I'm not sponsored in any way. I'm not into that kind of thing on YouTube at all. But yeah, I'd buy them again. If I needed more of these, I'd buy the same again. One thing does baffle me though, and this is this is where it's going to get a little bit weird. These all came in a storage tray, uh, obviously made at the same place as where all of this kind of thing is made now these are great these are superb take a look at this though all right this is i have to say possibly one of the worst bits of accessory i've ever seen in my life like, i'm not even going to bother showing you the whole thing it suffice to say that when you use this obviously all the rods you get stick in these little holes and all the toe clamps and that go down here and you're supposed to make a nice little storage rack however take a look at this this was made in china and i've got nothing against chinese people or china apart from coronavirus maybe at the moment who knows but i think we made this was on the source that day the whole thing is just looks like it's been thrown together by a bunch of one-armed chimps it's absolutely atrocious. They get, they start off with a lovely set like this, and then they give you this crap. It's basically some old plywood, and I, I mean it's literally plywood with a few bits of brass tube in there, and it looks like actually, like I say, it looks like it's just been dipped in glue rather than a brush used on it. It is absolute. It is a difference is night and day. It really is. You've got really nice quality blocks and clamps. Then you got this. Walko. What are you doing? I know you sub out to these Chinese companies, but God. I'm not overly bothered. As I say, I'd buy it again. I'm not interested in this anyway. I didn't even know this was coming with it. I was more interested in the obviously the uh, hardware that you know the, the clamps and uh, bolts and everything. But I think if you if they're gonna do something like this, they should do it properly. I could probably make something better than this with my eyes closed in about half an hour. And I'm not on a production line. Absolutely joke absolute joke. Anyway, um let's put it that way. What I'm gonna do now 
you stop the camera, uh, just go over to where I've been working today, just show you what I've been, uh, the setup I've got, what I was doing. It's not, like I say, it's nothing fancy. Um, anyway, I'll see you over there. Cheers. Right, so as you can see, this is what I've been up to today. Uh, basically what I was doing is I've had some metal tubing that a friend of mine has wanted me to trim down to all the same length, 145. He gave me some lengths of pipe and I've cut them down. Now I'm tidying the ends up. Uh, while the bandsaw was out of action, I'm still tweaking that. I am. I decided the best way to do it after I'd rough, got them down to the roughing was just to mill it. That way they're all the same size, no arguments. You want them 145 millimeter, easy. Set up a stop here as such. Push the pipe up against it using haha, from the aforementioned clamping kit. And then also setting up that. So that as I wind, as the table goes, let me, uh, hold on. There's all me kit gone, there it is. So I'm doing that or two, hold on. So as you can see, as I wind this handle backwards to add a bit of cut, when it hits that stop, I can take as much as I want, as long as I stop when I get there. That then gives me exactly 145 millimetres on the thing. Like I say, not the most inventive of jigs, probably been done by a million people a million times. There's people out there get a lot more creative with their setups. I'm still learning. So, yeah, that's my setup. And uh, basically, I just milled the ends flat, squared up my end, pushed it in here, as I said, then milled the other end, got everything to the same length. There's 12 of them. Very simple. Hope the lighting uh, does that justice. Anyway, right, back to the desk. So one of the things I've been looking at doing is finding a decent paint stripper that doesn't cost the earth and is a bit more environment friendly. Uh, this is a piece of my boxwood lathe uh, that I'm using as a bit of a test piece. If this bit gets damaged, it won't affect the functioning of the lathe in any way. So it's a kind of a test thing. Um, one of the things that was very important to me is that we use something that isn't gonna hurt animals, the environment, myself included you know i want something a bit friendlier but did the job well what i found on ebay was something called Enviromore. now this stuff i think this bottle is about six quid there's 250 milliliters in there it's not the biggest bottle in the world but it is environmentally friendly and if you get it on your hands it's not going to eat through you like nitromores does um nitromores being the uh the savage cage fighter of the paint stripper world um i put this on about a but you just brush it on it's like a little white it's like very watery wood glue uh in texture you just brush it on nothing fancy and then you leave it for a bit and what i found i've already done up here a little bit it's come off really well it actually scrapes off amazingly this paint isn't too thick i would imagine that if you wanted to uh put it on something really thick you would likely have to put on an extra coat or whatever I've only done the front part so I've not done the back or sides or anything like that um, it comes up pretty well though but I'd say if you've got a primer underneath or a thick coat of paint I think you would probably need two uh, coats of it but like I say you haven't got to worry about getting your hands getting it on your hands with this stuff it's not going to hurt anything you know you chuck it in a bin it's not going to poison anyone or any wildlife or anything like that and that to me is like i say is quite important um obviously but then so again so he's getting the job done if this hadn't worked i'd have to come up with a plan b i still would go around mucking around with stuff like this and just as a as a side note yeah there's a bit of a thicker bit there that it isn't quite coming off and as a bit of a side note what i would also say is if you muck around with chemicals of any kind whatsoever whether it be paint stripper white spirit anything anything that is considered uh, a chemical you know any kind of oil you know if you're using wood finishes and stuff like that protect yourself 
read the read the instructions, follow the instructions, and make sure you wear the, the right equipment and you dispose of anything. Like this, see all this gloop here, all right? Make sure that you deal with anything like that responsibly. What I'm going to do in mine is I'm going to scrape it all into a pot, keep it, and then next time I go down to the local tip, I'm going to they have special places for the, this kind of waste and you know like a. Uh, oily waste and that kind of thing no doubt they've got a section for this stuff as well um all in all pretty good i'm going to put a link to it down below in the description to this environmental stuff it's actually very very good um i've got another bit soaking behind the camera that you can't see here that's another part of the lathe which has actually got a different color paint on it which because it came from two different sources i just want to see what it can really handle on that one like i say the primer is still quite tough underneath that's likely to need another coat Okay. Anyway, that's about it for that one. On to the next thing. Cheers. Hey, Forest. Well, I thought we only had the mini countryman, but for a test drive. We can't stay here. We're not going to. You record it. Oh, you son of a bitch. You are recording. Exactly what I meant. Relax. With minis.